Welcome to another e-learning tutorial from DA Canane Limited. Recently I was asked to make a quick tutorial on the Edblock software for use with the Edison robots. I tweeted this tutorial out and the good people at Edison liked what they saw. In our conversation they mentioned that their EdPi software is not as well used as they would like by teachers and pupils despite there being some great tutorials on their own website. So as a result of this conversation, I have decided to see if I can help with the demystification process for them and for you. There are three different types of software available to teachers in the Edison suite, and it is easy to think that they were created with the following structure in mind. Edblocks for juniors, Edware for upper juniors, and Edpi for high school. This is not the case, and I would encourage you all to expose all of your students to all three of these programs to ensure that they understand how they all work and are related to each other. The drag and drop interface of the blocks is an inspired way to get students to code, but the image of the block is still calling the same or similar code as, we were, as if we were to write it. It is the writing of the code that seems scary, so I've decided to create an interpretation chart for you to help you see how the blocks and code are related and crucially, why using the code gives a better and more accurate outcome. So let's see what I've created here. You can see that I've set up a table here with Edblocks, Edware and Edpi. And I'm going to take you through just a couple of blocks for you to see how they're all related. So if we look at the Edblocks move forward tutor, um, block here, what you can see is that you can program it to move forward with both wheels uh, for one second. So the little icon there with the clock indicates the amount of time. If we look at the similar block in Edware, it's dual drive, means both of them are working. Um, but once you click on that block, you get a couple of extra options. So you can say how far um, you want to move forward, or, for, or for what speed, sorry, you want to move forward. But if we look at the EdPi uh, code here, this is the actual code that's un running underneath these blocks. But as you'll see in a moment, you'll see that we get a much more um, options. So if we look at this, we can see here that we, we type in ed.drive and then inside the brackets, very helpfully, we've got direction, speed and distance. So now we can get down to some real specifics here, whereas um, in the ed blocks, we just say we want to go forward for one second, which is, which is fine. Um, and the edware, we want to say we want to go forward at a speed of 10. But actually with the code, we can say direction, speed and distance, as I just said. Let's have a look at this. So what that means now is um, with the direction option, we can type inside the brackets, inside the first comma, ed.forward. And that tells that we want to tells the um, Edison that we want to use both motors and we want both motors to go forward. And then in the speed bracket, we can type ed.speed and a whole bunch of options come up and I'll show you that in a moment. So we can see that we can choose a speed of eight. But crucially, in terms of accuracy, the final um, option inside the bracket here is the distance and you'll notice at the top when I show you in a moment uh, we can set the distance to being imperial or metric and so this one here I mine set to metric and so I'm going to go forward 25 centimeters and that's really crucial so basically this red block and this blue block are kind of using the same code under the hood but you don't get the options that you can get and, and the granularity that you can get if you actually start to type it, which is why I think it's very important that students get to see all three of these together. So let's have a look at another example. Okay, here's the Ed Blocks option here to turn right. And again, we only have a turn right option for a duration of time, seconds. And so that becomes very difficult if the students want to make something that's accurate, they want to turn a little bit, they then start to got thinking about fractions of a second and stuff, and they get into a pickle really quickly, and it's not very granular. Let's look at Edware single drive again, um, and we can look at this, we can, we can set um, the same options as you can see for dual drive, with the additional um, extra value of either switch saying it's the left motor or the right motor. And so we can go, say again, say the speed and which one is going to be turning. So, you know, more control, but not much more. But under EdPi, if we look at it again, if we um, change ed.forward to ed.spin underscore right, and you'll see in a moment what I mean by that when we skip to actually use the actual program live, and then ed speed again. And again, at this time, because we are um, turning the Angle, the, ang the, the number at the end of the, here is actually um, degrees. 
so we get a great level of accuracy and which is why it's a really good tool to use and I would encourage you not to shy away from it and as soon as you start getting used to typing with it and using the syntax and we'll get into that in a moment you'll see that you've got much more control many more options than you can do by just using the blocks so the blocks if you like are trainer wheels and it be I would encourage you all to start getting children and quite young children as well because you'll see the um, how the, the um, interface works to start using this so let's look at one more example okay so I'm going to use here the repeat function so you can see I've put those two blocks together in ed blocks we can see here we're going to go forward for one second uh, and we're going to turn right for one second and we're going to repeat that four times in the hope that we make a square now if you put that program in and run it in ed blocks you get the repeat function but you don't get anywhere near a square again if we look at this under the edware function here you get the loop so it's a little bit more sophisticated um, and we can see here we're, we're looping we're going to go forward um, with both motors then we're going to we're going to turn with one motor and we're going to loop this and again we can put in here the option here inside the loop um, block to um, say we're going to do that uh, an, a certain number of times in this case four and if you run that um, providing you've programmed the dual drive and the single drive blocks you will get something approximating to a square under edpy this is this is really what's running under the hood of those two programs there is this but we're looking at something new now and this is where it gets scary but if you use the dictionary at the side on the, on the right hand side of the screen you'll get lots of help so for basically means loop and range means do what's inside the brackets the number of times that I say so on the yellow block if we look at the ed blocks there we put in f um, f the number four and the yellow block is basically saying for X in range in the edware block the loop function here the orange and yellow blocks is saying for X in range that's what that block is and then the other things that we've looked at below that we've got ed drive ed forward ed speed and the distance in this case 10 centimeters ed drive ed dot spin underscore right ed speed 5 90 degrees and with this one you get a very accurate square and this is why I suggest that you use um, these code the, the text very quickly rather than using the blocks the blocks to get started training wheels and get off of those now let's have a look at the how the program actually works this is the interface and the um, Edison tutorials on their website cover this really well so I'm not going to sort of re recover it but I mentioned I'm going to zoom in a little bit so just to make life easy for you to see and so what we've got here is the um, basic script that starts up now you can see here when you start the script up it asks you which version of Edison you're using if you look at this line here you can see we're using Edison version 2 but this if you click down to this next line here you can see it says distance units equals ed.cm and so that means it's metric and so let's just come out a bit further here if we click on this let's start writing our code now and I started writing before and the only thing that children and yourselves need to look out for is just um, syntax it's syntax errors so you know, the ed commands start with a capital E but as soon as you write capital E there's a, all these other options here come up for you so if you kind of know what you're looking for you can just start scrolling through but we know it's we, we want to type ed dot drive okay and we just click on drive here and now can you see it comes up with direction speed and distance and if I just click off this you can see um, if you just click in here you can, you can just see oh, it's not really showing now but it doesn't matter click on direction now inside these brackets so it's basically it's saying to you there are three things that to make this argument correct there are three things we need to put into here so if we just delete direction and type ed again dot and then this time forward click on here and we can or ed forward comes up and it's again, again the same with ed speed and as soon as you get understand that the, the, this is what you've got to do it's we're going to add dot spin or speed sorry click on speed there we go which we'll choose um six and then finally the distance is just a numerical value and because we're in centimeters we could we have to put a whole value of new of centimeters so we'll just put 25 in 
And so there we go, that's that's really how it works. It's very, very simple. Um, the only thing that you have to watch out for is um, some syntax. If you type in for, for example, um, x in range, open close brackets, you have to put a colon at the end. That's the kind of thing that's going to catch you out. Um, and if we just scroll around this, I try not to make it too sick making, at the bottom down here, you've got the, there are no errors in your code. So I'm just gonna delete this because there, there is, just delete this. So we can come over to here and it says, check, I'll just zoom out actually. So it's check codes. If you check code here, look at the bottom, it flashes orange and everything's okay. So if I, if I just come back into here, so you can see what I'm doing. And let's just do this for x in range. And we'll put four in here. And we'll put in a colon. The only thing we need to do here is we need to indent this. Um, just see that slightly. Can you see here in the in the underline help? It says Edison drives forward for twenty five centimeters at speed six. So let's execute the indented code to the number of times it takes x to get from one zero to four. So there we go. There are no errors in our code. Now over to the side here in documentation, there's a whole load of um, Option, um, things we've got down here. So things that the students want to do like clap or play a tune or play my beep. But right down the bottom here is all that Ed forward, Ed backward, Ed right, Ed left, etc, etc, etc. So there's Ed spin, speed, Ed motor, keypad. And so each one of these is a different code, pre-created pre code. Um, Ed distance units, you can change it in here to if you, whatever you wanted to do. It's inch or centimeters, close this. Um, but down here you can see you've got the, the range, true, um, and it, with explanations in them, which is, which, is quite, which is quite useful. So we click on um, while, if, and if else. Now these are really good. If used to run indented code condition following the if values. And so once you get used to this, else if, um, it's, it's a very easy way to create code because you, as you type, the options come up for you. And if you get stuck, the um, dictionary on the side helps you and then finally the check code down here um, doesn't work uh, well, it gives you some feedback so let's come back to here finally to show you so here we've got 4x in range and you can you see that the color coding tells you that you've got it right so if I'd for example put lowercase e in here all of a sudden we're getting a color coded message in here we can see the other edge orange um, so let's put this back to capital E and it works for us so let's have a look at this. If we check our code, there are no errors in our code. Now if I forget something simple like this colon here at the end, which is which is one of those things that we forget to do quite quite regularly, click on check code, and we get a syntax error, 13 is an 18 syntax error, um, and it tells you what line it's in. And so that could be a typing error in terms of uppercase or lowercase, but in our case it's a colon so we can put the colon back in again and then we test it so you know it there's there's quite good support to help students check their syntax and it's you know another editing skill which i think is quite a good thing to do so i think i hope you've um, understood how the blocks relate to the code mm -hmm. and how the code is easy to work with and um, if you'd like me to make some more uh, interpretations of what the blokes blocks mean in terms of the code that's underneath them I will do so just let me know in the comments